This is our lab report, Exploring Resistive Forces, by Kate Hammond, Samantha Gregoire, Michaela Kizzy. Our lab report's pur purpose was to explore the relationship between resistive forces and velocity. We hypothesized that as a liquid's density increases, the terminal velocity of an object moving through that liquid would then decrease. So as density increases between alcohol, water, and soap, the terminal velocity of a ball will proportionally decrease. This is due to an increase in resistive forces pushing back on it as it travels through, exerted by a higher concentration of particles in a liquid. We use drag force to model resistive forces in our experiment, so we are able to interpret the impact a change in density has on the square velocity when the net force is equal to zero, or in other words, when the drag force is equal to the gravitational force in the system. In our system schema, we have the liquid in contact with the ball on the ground, and we have the ground exerting gravitational force on both the ball and the liquid. In our free body diagram, you can see that when the ball reaches its terminal velocity, acceleration is zero, so the net force will be zero. Therefore, the resistive forces of the liquid on the ball in the upwards direction will be equal and opposite to the gravitational forces on the ball in the downwards direction. The resistive forces that are relevant to motion in liquid are viscosity and drag. Viscosity is when the object is moving and pushes the liquid with it. Drag force is when the object pushed the fluid out of the way. These forces are dependent on the density of the fluid. In accordance with Newton's third law, the object is pushing on the fluid while the fluid is pushing back on the object, creating opposite and equal forces, i.e. the resistive forces. In our experiment, we dropped a metal ball in three different liquids, water, alcohol, and soap. We took videos of each trial and used Tracker to record position, velocity, and acceleration. We then used these values to calculate terminal velocity and resistive forces. For our calculations, we calculated the drag force using the uh, pictured equation. So we multiplied one half times the drag coefficient for the object for a sphere is 0 0.47 times the density of the liquid, which, determined, which was determined by which liquid we are currently using, times pi r squared, and the radius we used for the ball was 4 millimeters, times the velocity squared. And for velocity, we used the terminal velocity. Um, for the proportionality constant, we basically calculated the entire first portion of the drag equation, um, everything beside the velocity squared so that we could see how the density affected the relationship between the drag force and the, the square of velocity. Um, there's, it's a possibility that we dropped the ball from varying heights or we were unable to use tracker consistently. And in the future, we would calculate the Reynolds number instead of just assuming that drag force was the dominant force in the situation. Our results stated that there was a marked decline in terminal velocity as density increased. Um, and the proportionality constant would increase as density increased, which is mainly due to the increase of the drag coefficient of the liquid. The reason that there was a decline in terminal velocity when there was an increase in density is due to the concentration of particles within that liquid exerting friction. In reality, it's the resistive forces onto the object. Um, if you keep the object's mass shape surface area the same, we did this by dropping the same subject over and over, uh, the magnitude of the resistive forces will only be influenced by the density of the liquid and the velocity of the object. As density increases and velocity decreases, the magnitude of the drag force will remain constant at the gravitational force when at terminal velocity. We know that terminal velocity, we know that when at terminal velocity, the drag force is equal to the gravitational force because there's a constant speed. And when there's a constant speed, acceleration equals zero, meaning that the net force is also zero. This is similar to macroscopic friction, is that both friction and drag are resistive forces, but um, friction is not dependent on speed, unlike drag. Thanks, Thanks for watching! watching.